The following program is made possible by the partners and friends of Ronnie Phillips Ministries International. You were created to be more than you are now, to love more than you love now, and to live a life that's fully alive. Take a few minutes and join Pastor Ronnie Phillips for a message of grace that will help you live fully alive. The Bible comes alive when you visit the Holy Land. Travel to Israel with Pastor Ronnie Phillips in May of 2023. Walk where Jesus walked, cry where He died, pray where He prayed, and worship where He worshiped. Your experience will include a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee, a cable car ride to the top of Masada, a visit to the Dead Sea, Nazareth, Jericho, Bethlehem, and more. Walk the Via Dolorosa, see Yad Vashem, the memorial to six million martyrs of the Holocaust. Visit Golgotha and the Garden Tomb, and so much more. Dr. Ron Phillips will be our guest teacher. Visit RonniePhillips.org for all the info and begin planning now to join us for this life-changing trip. Greetings, partners and friends. This is Pastor Ronnie Phillips. Welcome to Fully Alive. It is our mission to help you live free and fully alive. Today, I want to bring you a message from the book of Nahum. That's right, Nahum. Who preaches out of the book of Nahum? Well, the Lord instructed me to last year, and I believe if you'll pay attention to these ancient words, your life can be forever changed. Everything they experienced in the Old Covenant, physically and in the natural, we experience spiritually in the New Covenant. So I want you to pay attention today as I bring you a message titled, Are You Sure? Are you sure you want to keep going down the same path you're going down? Are you sure you want to be a religious person or a casual Christian? Are you sure you're going down the right path? I hope that you will open your mind and your heart and receive the word from God today. In the book of Jonah, God calls him to this Nineveh and he doesn't want to go. He gets swallowed by a large fish and he stays in the belly of that fish and he gets spit out. And then he eventually he honors God and he preaches to this Nineveh and they have revival and they all come to the Lord. And, and at the end of Jonah, he's laying under a tree depressed wanting to die. And I told you last week, I've always wondered why. I mean, I could preach Jonah all day long. And then I get to the end and I'm like, he just saw the greatest revival and now he's laying under a tree and wants to die. Weird. Could it be that Jonah knew this city would turn back to their wicked ways and eventually be destroyed from top to bottom, from the king all the way down because of their wickedness and unrighteousness? We move from God's character to his contempt, from his direction to his discipline. So my question is, are you sure? Because everything we're taught in the old covenant is a picture of what we deal with spiritually in the new covenant. He is patient, but there comes an end to wickedness. There comes an end to rebellion. There comes an end to ignorance. Are you right with God? Are you sure you've been born again? Are you washed in the blood? Do you not just claim Jesus, do you follow Jesus? When judgment comes, you will have no other opportunities to follow Christ or accept his free gift of grace. He is a loving God, but he is a just God. Nineveh, over a course of 100 years in Assyria, committed horrendous evil acts and God would restore them. He would raise up prophet after prophet and they continued to do evil in the sight of the Lord. They refused to turn from their wicked ways. God is slow to anger, my friend, but he's great in power. So when we look at Assyria, who had a really a stronghold on that entire region, modern day Turkey and Iraq now, we see the personality of God we see the patience of God, but we also see the promise of God. God will not allow those of us that know him to stay in decline forever. 
So if you know him, that's good news. God will not allow his children to stay in bondage forever. God will not allow his children to be mistreated by their government forever because there is a new government where the king of all kings reigns on high, where we have access to every good and pleasant thing. It even has its own language, its own constitution, 66 books worth. If you have access to that kingdom, you're not under this government. Now you should do what is right. Pay unto Caesar what is Caesar's, pay unto the Lord what is the Lord's. But I don't know about you, but I've been adopted into a new family. I've been guaranteed a new future, amen? I'm not confined or constrained by what I see on the news, by my past, by religion. God's got a hold of me and God's got more for me and he's got more for you. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. Who can withstand his indignation, it says in our text. Who can endure his burning anger? Wickedness destroys legacy. See, I believe in biblical legacy. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I believe in daughtership and sonship, and I believe the biblical model is for old man to dream dreams and young men and women to see visions and the spirit to be poured out on all flesh, Joel chapter two. But if you want to cut off your kingdom legacy, if you want to put a curse on your future and the future of your children and grandchildren, turn away from God, do wicked in the sight of God and never repent for it. See, it's one thing to sin ignorantly there is the sin of ignorance. Hey, I just don't know any better, right? But then there's the sin of iniquity. That's when you know better. The consequences for iniquity are worse than the consequences for ignorance. Who can withstand his indignation, his burning anger? Pagan societies such as Assyria, Nineveh, they put a heavy emphasis on legacy too. I mean, they didn't care what was going on. If you had a son or a daughter in the bloodline, they were guaranteed either to marry someone who would continue the legacy, or if they were a male, to walk right into it. But what we learn in this text today is no matter how strong our worldly governmental legacy may be, when we do wicked in the sight of God, I don't care if you have four presidents and seven governors in your family line. What we learn in these verses is that no matter how powerful your earthly legacy is, when you do wickedness in the sight of God, he will destroy your legacy. It says, whatever you plot against the Lord, he will bring it to complete destruction. Oppression will not rise up a second time. Consumed like thorns. Coming after a drink like a drunkard. Like straw that is fully dry. One has gone out from you who plots evil against the Lord and is a wicked counselor. And then this is for God's children. For Judah. For the people of Israel. Though they are strong and numerous, they'll be mowed down. That's for somebody this morning. You feel like the devil has surrounded you, that you have no future, that you can't quit the struggle you're in the midst of, that nothing ever goes your way, that when you got saved, nothing good happened. You're not even sure why you made that decision years ago, but the spirit is starting to stir in you. And the Lord wants you to hear that though your enemies may be numerous, though your struggles may be great, God will remove them and God will mow them down. Yes, he is a God of love, but he is a God that will not let his children suffer forever. They are strong and numerous. They will be mowed down. Though I've punished you, I will punish you no longer. For now I break off his yoke, this demonic king, 
from you and tear off your shackles. Now here's the part that speaks to legacy. There will be no offspring to carry on your name. It was a big deal in that society. I will eliminate the carved idol and cast image from the house of your gods. I will prepare your grave for you are contemptible. Look to the mountains, the feet of the herald who proclaims peace. Celebrate your festivals, Judah. In other words, experience joy, God's people. Put a smile on your face, God's people. This message is not for you. Just understand, God's people, that the devil will have his day, that he has been defeated, that his destiny is a lake of fire, and that those of us that know Jesus Christ will rule and reign with him forevermore that there is an eternity waiting on us, that there are crowns in heaven waiting on us. Our destiny is not a six foot hole in the ground or an urn on the shelf. Our destiny is with the great king of all kings. And although this says Judah, Galatians says we are grafted in to the line of Judah and that Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. And because of him, we have the victory. And no longer are we under the law, we are under grace. So if you know Jesus, you ought to be shouting today. If you don't know Jesus, his character is that he is patient and you're alive today and you have an opportunity to finally put it all to rest and accept Jesus and truly follow him. Look to the mountains, to the feet of the herald, to those who proclaim peace. Celebrate your festivals. Fulfill your vows. Let me put this in contemporary language. Put a smile on your face. Be faithful to the things of God, including your church. For the wicked one will never again march through you. He will be entirely wiped out. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do but I came to celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ and rejoice in my victory today because the victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine and it is ours, those of us who know Jesus. Devastation number one. You can bet on these three things. Devastation comes to the unbeliever. Judgment and destruction came to Nineveh and it comes to the unrepentant sinner. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But we never quote the next one. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God didn't send Jesus to condemn us, but if we reject him, condemnation is coming. He who believes in the Son, verse 36, has everlasting life. And he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, for the wrath of God abides on him. So, absolutely, dest destruction and devastation comes to the unbeliever. But the good news that we just celebrated is deliverance comes to the believer. Amen? Amen? Listen, Judah, they were under the control of Assyria. They were under the control of demonic leadership. And they had to believe this by faith. Though they're strong and numerous, they will be devastated by the judgment of God. You have to claim that for yourself says, though you've been under punishment, that day is over. You, you are under grace. 2 Timothy 4 verse 18 says this, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom, a kingdom that cannot be shaken. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 says this, then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. In other words, the Lord knows what's up. He knows whether you're ignorant to sin or you're involved in iniquity. 
The Lord knows whether you need grace in this season or you need accountability in this season. You see, some of you begging for grace and you've had an abundance of it. And you haven't done anything with the grace you've been given. And some of you feel like you've been under punishment, but today, showers of mercy are hitting your life for the first time. And you're understanding that the love of God and his grace and mercy, they are enough to carry you out of this dark season into your new destiny. That's who God is and that's what he does. Number three, defeat comes to the ungodly. Defeat comes to the ungodly. If I've done my job the last two weeks, even giving you the historical background last week, then I've made it clear that every day has its dog and every dog has its day. And the devil has been defeated and his day is coming and that those of us that know Jesus will reign victoriously with him. So I wanna ask you a few questions before I give you my last point for today's message. This is a prophetic release of questions that I believe someone needs to hear with their spiritual ears this morning, either in the house or online. Are you sure you want to stay right where you are? Are you sure you want to stay right where you are? This could be addiction. This could be your mindset. This could be your fear. This could be your bondage. This could be your depression. This could be your drama. This could be your sin pattern or your sin struggle. This could be what you inherited from your family. Are you sure you want to stay there spiritually? Are you sure? Maybe you were living in a place that God called you out of a long time ago. Maybe it's a spiritual place. Maybe it's a natural habitat. Maybe God has called you to go take a risk and a chance. Are you sure you want to stay right where you are? Number two, for those of you that love Jesus, are you sure you want to bow to Satan and the best his government can give and not God's? Are you sure you want to bow to the government of Satan, not God's government? In other words, are you sure you want to continue to look to the things of this world for your blessing, for your favor, for your promotion, for your dreams and ideas? I believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus left with us, you can accomplish your dreams. You can go to the next level. You can have more purpose on this earth and crowns in heaven. It simply requires you to accept it and move forward in it. Are you sure you want to bow to Satan and his form of government? Are you sure you want to be a casual Christian? I mean, the scariest part of the Bible to me is in the New Testament where Jesus says, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, haven't we done things in your name? Haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't we done miracles in your name? Haven't we helped people in your name? And haven't we done this? And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. See, faith in Jesus Christ is not intellectual faith. I believe in reading the Bible. I believe in studying the Bible. I believe it is the word of God. I understand theology. I've got the degrees. I've studied it. I can tell you the difference between a pre-trib and a mid-trib and a, what Calvinism looks like. But authentic faith is not intellectual. It is spiritual. And some of you have never moved from head knowledge in the heart knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because let me tell you the difference. You can know that you need to forgive that person that hurt you, 
But if you're connected to the Holy Spirit, you have to forgive that person that hurt you. You can know something's a sin, but when you're connected to the Holy Spirit, you are going to be convicted if you go down that path. Heart knowledge, not head knowledge. Are you sure you want to be a casual Christian? And for those of you unsaved, are you sure you want to keep rejecting God? Are you sure you want to keep rejecting the things of God? Colossians chapter 3, verse 25, for you New Testament only people. But he who does wrong, all will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. We learn from the Old Testament, from Jehovah, that God has always been patient, that he's always been loving, that he's just, but he can't be loving and allow his people to suffer forever. He himself would be a contradiction if he continued to allow babies to be murdered, people to suffer in poverty and be abused and his people to lose their voice. So I believe he's coming with the shout of an archangel. I still believe every knee will bow. Every Islam knee will bow. Every sinful knee will bow. Every atheist knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of all kings. So are you sure you want to reject God? The punishment for rejection. Verse 14. The Lord has issued an order concerning you. There will be no offspring to carry on your name. I will eliminate the carved idol and the cast image from the house of your gods. In other words, I'll make a fool of that which you worshiped while you lived on this earth. I will prepare your grave for you are contemptible. I believe God is leading people who lead people to a higher standard. And for those of you who love Jesus, delight comes to the faithful. Those who bring the good news of peace, the Bible says, have beautiful feet. They partner with God for the salvation of men and women. Feet speak of activity, of motion and progress. These people are active. They're moving in the work of the kingdom and have beautiful feet. In Isaiah, the good news is the coming of Jesus, the Messiah. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. But in Nahum, the good news is the defeat of God's enemies. The defeat of God's enemies. Revelation 17 and 18 describe the fall of Babylon, the world system, and all its support structure that we are so enamored by today, that we are so controlled by today. We don't mean to worship it, those of us that know Christ, but in a sense, we worship by accident this world system. Revelation chapter 18 shows how the kings and the merchants of the earth mourned the fall of Babylon. Why? Because that is where their faith was. But Revelation 18 through 20 says that heaven rejoiced at the fall of Babylon. That when this world system crumbles, heaven will rejoice and the people of heaven will rejoice right along with it. What is mourned on this earth sometimes is applauded in heaven. Let me say that again for those of you in the back. What is mourned on this earth is applauded in heaven. So maybe you've lost someone during this pandemic. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've buried friends such as I have. If they knew Jesus, what we mourn on earth will be applauded in heaven. Amen. And I want you to be comforted today. That's what the word Nahum means, to be comforted, to comfort or console. 
to understand better days are ahead. God is not through with his church yet. God is raising up a new generation of leaders. Revival is being poured out and no weapon formed against God's church shall prosper. So I want you to allow God's grace to cover you and cause you to be more faithful to the things of God, to the church of God, to the word of God, to sinners, to those in the struggle. May this message under the anointing not only be a warning, may it stir your spirit to get back in the race, back in the field, back in the fight for God. He's not finished with us yet. Hallelujah. Listen, I believe if we'll turn from our sins, if we'll repent, if we'll come back to God, that he will renew us and restore us and save us. If you need a word from the Lord today, if you need restoration in your life, if you need salvation, if you say, Pastor Ronnie, I don't know if I died today, if I would even go to heaven. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus. That's right, Dear Lord Jesus. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart and save me. Save me. Fill me with your spirit and use me for your glory. If you prayed that prayer, we would ask that you go to my website, RonniePhillips.org. Register that salvation decision with us. We want to help you get started in your new walk with Christ. Now I want to let you know about a special offer we are giving to all of our friends that watch this broadcast on the internet, on television, on the various networks. We're going to give you this entire series through the book of Nahum for $10. If you go to my website, RonniePhillips.org, you can download this. You'll pay a $10 fee. It will help us preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. And you will grow deeper in your walk with Christ because of the word of Christ. And I know many of you, you haven't ever studied the book of Nahum. This will give you an eye-opening view of what our ancient ancestors went through and how it applies to your life. Thank you again for watching Fully Alive. Thank you for all your support. I want to thank all of my Ronnie Phillips Ministries International Partners. We couldn't do this without you. We will see you next time. In a world full of social unrest, wars, and natural disasters, how can you find peace? When you look to God's Word in history, you can discover the secret to trusting God in the middle of uncertain times. Pastor Ronnie Phillips has taken a small book in the Old Testament and walked step-by-step -step through it to uncover some valuable truths for us today. In the series, The Riches of Nahum, Pastor Ronnie helps you to trust God during uncertain times, to be sure of the things you believe in, to learn what is impossible without God, and to discover the consequences of our actions. For just $10, you can download the complete study through The Riches of Nahum now. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to order. Pastor Ronnie Phillips delivers help and hope around the world through missions, media, and the message of grace. Go online to RonniePhillips.org to partner with Pastor Ronnie today and join us again next week for another message that will help you live free and fully alive.